Good afternoon, delegates, and thank you very much for attending conference today. I'm going to open up with a quote, and I think it's quite an apt quote. The achievements of an organisation are the results of the combined efforts of the individual. You, our members, are the most important people in this room. Through our member network, you have considered, engaged with, and put positive arguments for and against the policies that were put forward for our manifesto. And from that process, we have this amazing and well thought through, professionally constructed and presented, and presented vote-winning vote manifesto. As the nation hopefully moves into a new era of self-determination and global engagement after we leave the EU, we will need to engage with everyone around the nation to explain our plan for the future governance of the UK. Whilst we pull away from the socialist peril embedded in the EU constructs with all the prohibitions and diktats that every day intrude on our freedoms and liberty. You, the members, are key to our success and consequently so very important to us. Now, the best form of advertising for any organisation is word of mouth. So it is very important that you talk with friends, relatives, colleagues and neighbours to sow the seeds of libertarianism firmly in everyone's minds. Now, as the possibility of a general election is looking inevitable, all the other parties will play the negative blame game and throw insults and talk ne negatively about how bad the other side is. So you'll hear Labour say, the Conservatives don't care about anyone but themselves. Labour will say, sorry, the Conservatives will say, Labour will make you poorer. During the referendum campaign, I held the position of constituency coordinator and referendum agent for Vote Leave in Stroud. During an event at the Royal Agricultural University in Sirencester, Daniel Hannan, M MEP, said in a speech, and this really stuck in my mind, and I quote, it is no good reflecting people's grievances back at them. You shouldn't talk to them about things they are already angry about. You have to show them you have a better plan. Me and Dan spoke for a while after the event on how things will get better when we leave and how by giving a positive message and by using facts and empirical data to showcase our message, we could bring people along to vote for us on polling day. This is what I want you to do as an individual and us as a party. We need to sell a positive message, sell our manifesto, sell libertarian values and principles so that we can build a strong nation with small government, low taxes and a confederation of free states that has a written constitution that will give the individual the right to live their lives without the malevolent interference and prohibitions from the state. Now, I once heard a saying that the referendum was supposed to re reboot the current political operating system to a new operating system, but instead the main Westminster parties have allowed it to reboot to the old operating system. We have, my friends, that new operating system in our hands, and that's in our manifesto. And we need to reboot the system. How are we going to do this? We are going to sell a positive message. Along with our manifesto, we are continually improving how our party operates with the introduction earlier this year of local associations. We have regular meetups up and down the country, and we, which are really important, and communication is improving all the time. And we're looking to improve that even further as we go.
You may ask yourselves, why do we need this member network? We need this network to get our message out to the electorate. We need to carry on building our network and you are the ambassadors on the ground. We need to recruit more ambassadors. Now today, is, the world is a digital world and one where you can share our ideas on social media. If you're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram, follow the party accounts and let's share our message far and wide. Now, as I mentioned before, know your facts. I myself am a political geek, so I am constantly reading and watching to see what is happening in the political world. Earlier this year, both myself and Andrew attended a Brexit debate at Stroud, Stroud College. Now, for those of you who don't know, Stroud is a small town in the South Cotswolds and has been described as Glastonbury in the Cotswolds. So we had our work cut out with all the hippies and the eco-friendly troops. And if you've been watching the news lately, a lot of the Extinction Rebellion leaders are actually from Stroud. So I've got quite a tough gig there. It was, packed, it was a packed debate and we had lots of questions asked of us. We both had the facts with us throughout and afterwards, we had students coming up to us with words of support. One thing I learned when I stood in the general election in 2017 was that you need to know your facts as well. And a little story that I had, we, this was my favourite hustings. If people don't know what hustings are, it's when the candidates are invited to do, to do a public debate. And it was at the Dursley Tabernacle Church in Gloucestershire. And it was set out like a proper TV debate. So you had the chairperson, who was the vicar, and then you had all five candidates there. And a question came up about the, the health service. And we were, as candidates, we were allowed to interject and question the other candidates. And a point, point came up about um, the NHS. And I said, can I cut in and ask David Drew, who's the Labour, now the Labour MP in Stroud, but he, um, he was stood next to me to, on my left there. And I said, I'd like to ask David why Labour continued with the PFI programme that originally started with John Major's government but allowed that to carry on with a starting cost of about 11 billion which then spiralled up to 79 billion and it was like I punched David in the stomach I physically saw him jump back and it took a few, about 30-40 seconds for him to calm down and then he said we got some nice hospitals out of it so by knowing the facts, and especially those of you who are standing as a candidate, know your facts. Now I don't expect every member to know everything in the manifesto off by heart, but I do expect all the parliamentary candidates to. I would like you to know some of the key points so that when you are having conversations with your friends and neighbours, etc., you have some facts. This will help sow the seeds, as I mentioned earlier on. When we have captured that person's attention, we have to inspire them and help them re realise the potential they have. If they are free from all the shackles of the state, we can then show them that they will be free to grow their lives and they will be able to feel liberty. I will close now with a poem. It is a poem written by C Siegfried Sassoon, who, like Wilfred Owen, wrote his poetry about the horror that was the First World War, which him and Siegfried served in. The poem was published in 1919, the year following the end of the First World War, and the jubilant singing that features in the poem has been interpreted as a reference to the armistice. When I first read it, I realised that it was for the hope of hearing the people sing when fighting ceased that lifted Siegfried's heart and spirit. I had a thought that I too would like to hear the singing when we regain our freedoms and liberty. The title of the poem is Everyone Sang. Everyone suddenly burst out singing 
and I was filled with such delight as prison birds must find in freedom, winging wildly across the white orchards and dark green fields, on, on, and out of sight. Everyone's voice was suddenly, suddenly lifted, and beauty came like the setting sun. My heart was shaken with tears, and horror drifted away. Oh, but everyone was a bird, and the song was wordless. The singing will never be done. We, my friends, must keep our message alive, recruit more members, and build our network so we can hear the singing. Thank you for listening.